What's up YouTube? This is Jay <clears throat> What's up YouTube? This is JP Panther back with a video and today's video is actually another Marvel slash My Hero Academia type of discussion video. This is gonna be just my thoughts about it. I'm not sure how long it's gonna take. I'm just gonna kind of just go off of my brain and you know we're about to just get into it and this is you know if you guys can agree or disagree with me. We're about to get into it right now and we're about to you know jump into it right now so let's get into it. So Right now, the whole entire video right now is that who do you think is a better supervillain? Iron Man or Deku from My Hero Academia? And I'm about to give you my thoughts and my, uh, my, uh, my thoughts and my point of view and stuff like that. Again, you guys can agree or disagree with me, but we're about to jump into it right now. So let's get into it, blah, blah, blah. I feel like, in my personal opinion, who is a better superhero? Because <clears throat> Deku is still developing as a superhero. But I feel like, if you're talking about relatability, <clears throat> I feel like Deku was more relatable than Tony Stark. Because Tony Stark, you don't even relate to him unless you're rich and you're you're rich and white. Let's just be honest. It's kind of like Batman. Not Batman, but like, unless you're rich, white, pretty, pretty boy, whatever. Deku is a lot more relatable, in my personal opinion. Where Deku, where it's like, okay, he is, he lives in a superhero society. Uh, he is the only one probably in there without a quirk, gets bullied, make fun of, he, you know, All Might is pretty much the Superman of his world, and, you know, he's a loser reject, you know, uh, shy, wimpy kid, glows up, grows up, and he's the most badass character, in the first, one of the most badass characters in the series, and actually he's properly developed, and just feels more and more relatable. And also, Deku is Japanese, so it's a little different as well. So there's a racial element as well. So you know, so you know, one's a rich white male, one is a shy, rumpy Japanese nerd who gets his ass beat. You feel me? It's just two different type of characters. I feel like you know the way the Marvel movies are with Iron Man and stuff. We're just talking about like MCU, or whatever. They've really made it really like very formulaic and popcorn movie where it's like the only problem with the, the main problem with the MCU is that they focus you have all this million dollar billion dollar movies and you just focus on Iron Man and now you kill him off you guys don't have any other characters that could you know match or be on par with him you guys are gonna try to Captain Marvel and I'm like yeah, listen Captain Marvel wasn't listen Captain Marvel you don't even know crap about her you wrote his own her own solo movie now, if it was Black Panther, it would be a whole different conversation. But what I'm trying to say is that, you know, with Iron Man, you know, you have this, you build him up, you just kill him off, blah, blah, blah. You don't have anything that could, like, you know, be on par and match with it. Where Deku is a lot different. Deku, you have, you know, Togorogi, you have Bakugo, you have the whole UA squad, you feel me? And the whole entire series isn't about Deku. Like, let's be honest, there's a lot of stuff that's with Deku. Beside, like, mo like the female characters and all of them, and uh, all the other female characters and stuff like that, whatever, or just the characters in general, are more interesting and cooler than Deku. And I like Deku, don't get it wrong. But Deku, he still hasn't developed his powers yet. You know what I mean? Like, he's still relatable, but it's like, you know, we haven't really learned a lot of... Not, like, not learned about him. We haven't developed his true, true powers. Because remember, he has all of the nine, six, nine users... Uh, one for all users inside his body like he still hasn't mastered black whip he could go like 45 percent one for all but he can't use all the powers like that you feel me we're all my you know when his prime is a little different but in my personal opinion i just feel like and this is how i truly feel like i'm just looking at both of them you know marvel's very formulaic you can say my hero academia's formulae with the shonen tropes whatever but like my hero academia takes risk i mean you're in a freaking war arc and you're freaking taking high school kids and throwing them in a freaking battlefield. Villain versus hero war right now, you feel me? Where you have Infinity War and Endgame, it's like, oh yeah, you spend 20 plus movies, you screwed a lot, around a lot, you pumped up Iron Man like freaking crazy, and he also just kept dragging out the story longer than what it is, and it's kind of like, Every movie was kind of like, you're just the next step to Infinity War. You are just the next step to this and that and this and that. And then when they got Spider-Man, they kept screwing around. Like, all right, we got Spider-Man. Let's throw it in there and let's just extend the, uh, the movies even longer. You feel me? So 
that's another thing as well. It's kind of like, you know, we have to wait all this time to get this Infinity War Endgame payoff, where in My Hero Academia, we're getting our versions of Infinity War Endgame in like five years compared to freaking um, 10, 11 years, you feel me? Because you got to realize, Iron Man came out, and the MCU and all that came out like 2008, uh, the event Infinity War and Endgame Infinity War I think came out in 2018 and Endgame came out last year so we waited like 11 almost a decade plus just to see a, a freaking um, conclusion where in My Hero Academia you have freaking listen at this point you got Shigaraki and I'm gonna be honest with you right I didn't like Shigaraki as a villain I'm gonna be honest with you I, I'm we're gonna be 100%. I thought he sucked in my first opinion. So, like, okay, he could decay and, uh, you know, make everyone disappear and ash, kind of like Baragon from a spot, of, like from a spot of number two in Bleach. But I was like, yo, you guys pumping him up, he ain't shit. But then you read My Villain Academia and he f fucked up the, the Liberation Army and destroyed Redestro and all of them. And I liked it how, you know, with My Hero Academia, they actually take chances on, like, the villains have different political ideologies and stuff like that, and have different views on how they could destroy the government and stuff like that. You don't really get that with the MCU. You get very family-friendly, popcorn, movie-ish type of vibe, you feel me? Every freaking Marvel movie seems, besides, I tell you before, besides Winter Soldier, Black Panther, Infinity War, Endgame, every single one of them is very formulaic. Where in My Hero Academia, the arts don't feel formulaic. You have the hero killer, you have um, you have the the challenge with the schools, whatever, you know, with the UA school, with them fighting each other. Then you had it where they had to fight other schools to get their provisional license. Then you had the relationship with Deku versus uh, Bakugo. I thought that was very, very interesting to show you that even though they're superheroes, they are still teenagers and they still have the same emotions and stuff like that. Then you had the overhaul, over, overhaul, uh, overhaul arc. Pretty much, he's a super villain drug dealer. You know, do you think Marvel or freaking them would take that type of risk? Hell no. They're gonna stay with a very Iron Man MCU, very very formulaic uh, type of business model because they know it will make money. But eventually, throwing out that CGI over the top special effects, people are getting tired of it. And we're kind of seeing that even with like with Black Widow. Let's be honest. Like Black Widow had like 42 million views when it first teaser when the whole coronavirus happened and was at 15 million so what i'm trying to say is that with my hero academia it's all about what, of the mcu and iron man and all of them i'm looking at it from those type of point of views and i'm looking at it you had overhaul stuff like that then you had the the japanese billboard with endeavor and hawks and stuff like that then you had the relationship you read the manga with endeavor and togorogi and stuff like that like you just have a lot more development and mind you you iron man you have a billion you have hundreds of millions and billions of dollars and you just still have a very formulaic storytelling where in my hero academia they're doing this with freaking uh black and white <laughs> cinema with a japanese comic book and then in Japanese animation. Huge night and a difference, you feel me? So I'm looking at the two characters, right? Breaking it down, looking at it, blah, blah, blah. Who is the better superhero? When we're talking about development and we're talking about relatability. And I'm going to be honest with you, a lot of y'all assholes ain't going to like it. I don't care. I'm going to be a savage. I'm going to keep it 100. I'm going to be a G with it. In my personal opinion, this is how I truly feel. I feel that Deku is a better superhero, better character, be better developed character than Robert Downey, Tony Stark, Iron Man. And that's just what I believe in. You feel me? I broke it down. So if you guys want to argue with me and disagree with me, I am 100% fine with that. I'm just letting you guys know that this is just my thoughts on it and this is just how I truly feel. I personally feel that Deku is a better superhero, better developed character than Robert Downey's uh, Tony Stark Iron Man. And they're both superheroes. One is just made by a Japanese comic book. One has well, it has a better freaking storyline and different concept and has no balls taking freaking risks. Especially when you read chapter 272, they take a freaking risk. They're not going to freaking snap everybody and bring them all back to life and all this crap. When the characters die in My Hero Academia, they die. They ain't coming back. They ain't no snapping back. 
You feel me? Uh, well, Iron Man and all of them, they snap them in Infinity, Daniel snaps them in Infinity War, and then brings them ass, the, them bitches back, and uh, Endgame and all that, and then of course he sacrifices himself and blah blah blah. And, you know what I mean? Again, it's very very safe. You feel me? It's not like you're really taking a risk and killing off all the characters and they're never coming back. So in my personal opinion, that's why Deku is a better relatable character than Robert Downey Jr.'s Iron Man. So again, that's pretty much it, guys. Let me know in the comment section below. What do you guys think about this conversation? Make sure you rate and like the video and subscribe. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Peace and have a great day and take care.